Welcome to this guide to assistance options in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm going to talk you through the options that I have set, why I've set them that way, and what I recommend uh, you guys do as well. So we'll start at the top with Auto Mixture. This adjusts the mixture in propeller planes for you between lean and rich. Unless you have a mixture control, a hardware control for mixture, I'd recommend you leave this on Auto. Unlimited fuel is down to personal preference. I have it switched on when I'm making videos, so I don't have to worry about it. But obviously, if you're doing a more realistic flight and you want to manage your fuel loads and make sure your aircraft is at a good landing weight at the end, then set that to off. Aircraft lights, I don't want done automatically, especially in airliners, because all the switches exist in the overhead panel. And I personally like to fly those properly. Gyro drift is whether your heading indicator uh, drifts during the flight. Unless you're going for like flight school levels of realism, I would personally leave that switched off. Crash damage, I have turned off because I do a lot of carrier stuff and um, crashes must be switched off for aircraft carriers. Stress damage, I have turned on because if you overstress the plane or fly it wrong, obviously you don't really want to get away with that in a flight simulator. Uh, same with icing, I leave that switched on because it's important to use anti-ice, especially in airliners. All the navigation aids, so I don't want HUD icons uh, superimposed on the world, so route and waypoints are off. Uh, taxi ribbon is on because unless you have the charts or like a Navigraph subscription for navigating around airports, it's probably easier for you to leave a taxi ribbon on and use the built-in ATC. Um, to give you a path to and from your stand at an airport. Landing path I have off because if you use ILS this is completely irrelevant. Smart cam mode is manual because it sounds like it moves the camera for you during flight and that's just distracting. Um, notifications are obviously all off because I don't want random stuff popping up while I'm flying. With a pilot in I have all the assists switched off because they tend to interfere with your ability to actually fly the plane, especially in stuff like the F-18. I've heard a lot of issues um, with it basically crashing the plane. The only assist here I have switched on is AI radio communications. So when I'm using the Flight Sim ATC, it deals with all that for me and I don't have to click to and from the ATC panel and press number options and stuff. Landmark markers, absolutely off. Like I said a little bit earlier with navigation markers, I don't want stuff like AR stuff popping up in the world. Uh, user experience. So a lot of this is just personal preference. The ones I do have switched on of a message log in the ATC menu because it's sometimes useful to see your clearance and the previous altitudes you would give them. ATC voices are obviously on, you want to hear it. Um, the heads up display in the chase cam I do have switched on because when you're in chase cam it's kind of a video game anyway and also with uh, the F-18 or other planes that don't show your desired speed and desired altitude in the aircraft itself uh, it's important to be able to see those things. Uh, GFX I've basically set to be as um, subtle as possible so they don't interfere with my flight so obviously uh, GFX is as jet pilot the G suit is on and I do like to end the flight when the aircraft shuts down purely because it fills out the logbook correctly. So that's just my personal preferences and my recommendations for the assistance options in Flight Sim. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please drop a like and feel free to subscribe because I make tutorial content fairly regularly. Thank you for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.